Grab your popcorn, rip that ticket, get in that seat, lickety split it, go watch a movie. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Go Watch a Movie, episode one hundred and eighty. Um, I guess for this episode, I should be welcome to episode one hundred and eighty. <laughs> Today, we're doing the movie A Quiet Place. Um, a quiet place for those who couldn't hear me whispering, but quiet place part two. I'm I'm sorry, we did a quiet place. This is part yeah. two. Uh, but before we get into that, a little bit of entertainment news. Like first and foremost, we should talk about the U.S. cinemas allowing some masks free patrons. Huh. Uh, did you see this in the theater? Quiet place? I did. I did. Yeah, I did see it in the theater, but I wore my mask. I didn't see any signs like that around where I was at. Uh, I saw some people without masks. First of all, I'm going to say it was glorious going back into a theater. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that smell. It's, it's like going into a blockbuster or used to be going to a blockbuster, but there's a certain smell and a feeling. And then the people. Of all types, all shapes and sizes, you just see it's just um, it's fantastic. I love it. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely saw the lady in front of me actually, who kept giving me the side eye, uh, did not have a mask on. But and I thought they I thought they were going to be like, hey, mask. But I guess with some people getting vaccinated, they are risking it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It was weird because the one I went to, they they were stressing, uh, you know, distance yourself. Or whatever, mm-hmm. but but everybody just kept sit, sitting on top of each other basically. And I had to move because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, what's going on? Why is everybody crowding me? Do I have the best spot or something? And then the, for me, I could have done without the people because I had a couple, a few. Uh, they were kind of rude. There was like three girls that were sitting in front of me, like off to the right a little bit, and they came in and they just talked the whole movie, and then they left like 20 minutes before it ended. I had three little boys do the same thing. What the fuck? And I was like, what's like, going on? Is that what kids do They were making now? fart noises. Yeah. They, were like, mm-hmm. uh, they were like, shh, it's supposed to be quiet. Like the movie says. <laughs> <laughs> I would come yeah. over there and fuck you up. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, I could have done without the people. We had some teenage boys there burping in the front too. So I, I, I feel your pain. Yeah, that's, that's uh, I think somebody told them though. I think that's why my three left before it was over. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I remember when fart noises were cool, but I, I don't think I ever would do it in a movie. I, I've always loved movies too much to interrupt them like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to watch a movie. I'm not in here to make fart sounds. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> there's a real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just want to get out there and go to those. Uh, go watch a movie. Um, wasn't in the show. Just saying, go watch a movie. Uh, moving on, Sony Chief. Talk Spider-Man future plans. Sony, not Disney. Uh, this is important because, of course, they're over there building their seemingly <laughs> Sinister Six. Uh, I'm not sure. We have Morbius coming, Venom 2 coming. Um, Craven just confirmed. <laughs> anyway, the most important thing he said was, uh, after No Way Home, it'll become clear that the universes are connected. Hmm. So that makes me happy. We're not just making anti-heroes. Movies over here. These we were we have a we have a purpose. We have a goal. Hmm. Um I, I don't know what that is, but we'll see. I yeah. guess. guess we'll have to stay tuned. Yeah. Uh lastly, speaking of Spider-Man, so a while ago, I don't know if you remember this, you might. We talked about some Disney Imagineering robots, and they were doing all sorts of acrobatic stuff. I think we both watched the video, or at least I told you about the video where the robots are jumping around, swinging around, and we got into a big discussion about how they're going to take over movies. And mm-hmm. uh, well, we know now what those robots were for. For uh, Disney's Avengers Campus opened in uh, Disneyland. Uh, California here in the States. And one of those robots is now a real life swinging, jumping Spider Man. What? And it looks incredible. 
<laughs> um, so it starts off with the guy in a Spider-Man suit, you know, doing a bunch of tumbles and stuff. And they, they have uh, Tom Holland doing voiceover because luckily you don't have to see his mouth move. But then he's like, all right, time to test this suit. So he goes off stage and then <laughs> he, next thing you know, one of those things clearly it well i know it was one of those because its movement is very similar to that video we watched of that but it comes zipping out just like spider-man would swinging through the air does the whole through the leg web sling thing and then lands on the roof out of sight and he comes out rolling you know it's awesome man mm-hmm. <laughs> like like to see that not cg to see that real and you can go watch that at the disneyland it's a, that's incredible it, it just was fantastic that's where we are now. <laughs> like, Future is here. Like, uh, like, think of the the realistic properties you can do in a movie. Like, because that mm-hmm. would all have been CG in the movie, but now you can make that look so much realer. You may break mm-hmm. a few in the process, but <laughs> right. Yeah, I just thought that was exciting. Uh, the part of that video is on the sites right now. There's actually the entire opening ceremony is on the site right now on gowatchmovie.com which awesome because they you know they have all the characters walking around uh-huh. they actually brought in Anthony Mackie to present the Captain America character with the Captain America shield so I thought that was pretty cool as well but uh so yeah he's like now the Avengers Academy will or campus will have a Captain America. Here you go. And he, so, yeah, that was pretty cool. Kind of <laughs> destroys the illusion that it's Anthony Mackie under there. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's entertainment news today. That'll bring us to trailers. You first to me, sir. Go right ahead. Hugh Jackman. Speaking of Marvel, <laughs> we're standing in the circle here. Snick, snick. Strow. That's my Wolverine. Um, but he's not working on this. Laugh at my Wolverine. It's going to be intimidating, sir. Uh. <laughs> but uh, Hugh Jackman, the movie is reminiscent. Yeah. He- he plays a, uh, and this is made by the Westworld folks, so I'm really looking forward to it because very impressed by them. But he plays a detective or a private eye, something like that, who apparently has built a machine that can see people's pasts. Um, uh, but the whole world, I guess, has been, or at least America, has been rocked by climate change, and some some parts of the city are submerged. Because sea levels rose, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he is searching for someone. And I can't tell if the girl who walks in at first, is that a memory? Or is she just, does she just resemble the woman he's looking for? But he takes a very liking to her. Like, like, sorry, God. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure she just looked like the person. Okay. So I kind of, kind of remind her. Him, him of, her. of her. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, this lady disappears and he goes searching for her through, I'm assuming, using her memories. Um, and he tries to retrace her steps by going back in through her memories. It's very cool. Better than the trailer is much better than I'm describing. Uh, looks awesome. And it's Hugh Jackman. So he's a fantastic right. actor. <laughs> yep. I enjoyed that one, too. Uh, so mine... Even though I don't want to say, you know, this is a, a fantastic act, actor, Mark uh, Wahlberg, but <laughs> the, the the trailer does look good. And I hope we don't get burned like we did with uh, Max Payne. I don't know if you remember that one. Oh, God, I, feel like, yeah. I feel like the trailer for that one was like pretty, pretty good. I mean, it, it drew me in, but then we went to see the movie and it was like, oh, my God. And it was yeah. Max Painful. <laughs> yes. Stop, <laughs> please. But this one is called Infinite. And basically, Mark, Marky Mark, you know, feel the vibration, uh, is he's he's, uh, he's the infinite, I guess. He's this guy who apparently uh, uh, 
has reincarnated, reincarnated, but doesn't know he's re- been reincarnated so many times that he has all these past like lives that he can tap into supposedly. But anyway, it starts off with the, with him being brought into this room and he's put at a table. He's got he's all chained up, so these guys have captured him. And he comes in. They got the the bad guy. I guess comes in. He puts all the stuff down. And he's like, so which one of these is yours? And the, and he like picks one up and says, I don't know. And then they get the guy. The bad guy pulls a gun on him, and then you know one bullet spins it. You know, click, and he says, "Every time you say I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull, you know, pull this trigger." So he does this a few times until finally, of course, he picks up something. He has some kind of a weird flashback moment, and then he remembers he's, you know, reincarnated so many times, I guess. And then, then the bad guy says, "You know, welcome back, old friend," or something like that. Then all of a sudden, it turns into the Wanted movie, where this <laughs> this hot woman crashes in with, you know, this crazy car and then saves him and she jumps out she's got machine guns she's shooting everybody and she says get in he gets in and she drives off you know and then they go to meet their little group of other people who I guess who are similar maybe have you know I'm guessing they, they have similar and it turns uh, into the old guard at that point <laughs> yes and then it turns into the old, exactly so I feel like this it's it's fun, it's a fun trailer I love the way they use the uh, the clicking of the gun mixed with the music it, it was a good time but I feel like we're going to get burnt and it's going to be another Max Payne. I hope not. But the oh. trailer's cool, and that's why I'm here for. I'm here for the trailer. So this is going to be sound really mean, but I'm working on the new me by saying the things I'm thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and say this. Okay. Do you think he's smart enough for a movie this like this? Um, <laughs> Mark, I feel like they picked him because he has kind of this. I don't want to say dumb jock like. You know, stereotype, stereotypical. You know that guy, but he does yeah. have kind of a like a kind of more of a, you know, kind of a. I mean, I hate to say it, but a dumb jock. I mean, he seems kind of he, like he always looks like he's the last person to understand what's happening in the room. Yeah, that's <laughs> why I think they picked him because he he seems clueless, and then all of a sudden he's going to have this you know realization that he's all these other people and he, you know gain all these other powers or something. So that's why I think they picked him. I wish they had picked somebody who I didn't I didn't recognize, yeah. just so I could get more into the movie and not just be like, well, there's Marky Mark again. But oh well. <laughs> I hope it's a cool trailer. Right. And that's why. And the guy's clearly successful and knows, you know, he's navigated his way to this. It's fine. Um, I'm just saying that's that's the impression I get when I look at him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Um, don't sue me. But <laughs> that will bring <laughs> us to a quiet place too. Watch bot if you would not mind. Following the deadly events at home. The Abbott family must now face the terrors of the outside world as they continue their fight for survival in silence. Forced to venture into the unknown, they quickly realize that the creatures that hunt by sound are not the only threats that lurk beyond the sand path. Director, John Krasinski. Thank you, Watchbot. First and foremost, so I've watched a couple of things about John John Krasinski. I know how to say it now. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, and I think we could be best friends with that guy. Oh, yeah? <laughs> he is so, move over, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't know if you watch The Office, but he's like Jim, but like a smarter Jim. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's charming. I think I'm smitten. I don't know oh, what's going you're on. In love, you're in love with the man. <laughs> But yeah, but like I love the way he explains like working on this movie and how he didn't want to do it at first because he thought the first one was perfect. I agree. <laughs> sure do. But uh, yeah, it, it, he he's like, yeah, I started writing, sitting down and writing the outline and treatment for this one, and I was like, damn it, I'm going to be directing this. So, but yeah, the way he he speaks about it and the passion he shows with his filmmaking and acting, very intriguing. But now to the movie. Uh, I was gonna sit down. I was hoping I could sit down. I should say and give a a rousing speech. I had one planned. I was like, "This is gonna be it." I was gonna say there there are a few movies you can list where the sequel is better than the first Terminator Two, and I can't think of any other. <laughs> hoping I could add this to it. Uh, John Wick ran franchise. John Wick 1 is definitely better than the other two, but it is a fantastic fan- franchise as a whole. So that's where I'm going to move this movie because I did not dislike this at all. I really enjoyed the direction they take they took, and I really enjoyed the opening sequence for one. I think probably more than a lot of the other movie because of that. 
one take shot that they did, and it was just a perfect setup for the movie. And, and uh, it's just amazing. What are your first thoughts on this? First thoughts. First thoughts. As I didn't think that they could do it. Uh, like the first, the first movie was so good, and yeah. it ended so perfectly for me. Anyway, the, the co- Emily Blunt just cocking that gun. I was like, that's that's what I wanted. I mean, I got everything I wanted. It was the greatest thing ever. But then I'm like, there's no way because I, I imagine my imagination went crazy. I'm thinking, okay, if they ever put a sequel to this, it's going to be Emily Blunt. She's going to be like Mad Max running around, <laughs> you know, with a baby on her back who also has a shotgun, and they're going to be killing monsters everywhere, and their kids are going to be like the sidekicks, and it's just going to be just, just <laughs> shotgun baby. <laughs> yes, shotgun baby. I have his own little baby shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I pictured in my head because it was just so epic and amazing. I didn't think they were going to go as grounded and realistic and just over the top good as they did with this one. Yeah. And they did it. I mean, they 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 surprised me. First, I should say spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. There's no way to talk about this without either yeah. ruining this one or the or the first one. So if you haven't seen them, you got to run out and watch them as well because they're so good. And normally, I don't like prequel prequely things, but I'm glad we got like a mini prequel. Yeah, the, at the beginning of this movie, it's like a little movie in, inside of a movie, kind of right at the head of it, and I think it works one because you get you get you know Krasinski in there again acting, even though he shouldn't be in there. We we get to see him again a little bit. Also, it gives you the moment. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and we get Emmett, which uh, in the moment between uh, Reagan when he he learns that one sign that he has to know to basically, you know, change everything for them later on in the movie. Mm-hmm. So but that, that was really nice to get those, those connections there. So I, I yeah, really, that first one just kind of tosses you into the fray. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. You don't have no, you have no idea what happened. We get a couple of news clippings from the beginning, but yeah. And I think, uh, I think the, the, the takeaway from the first movie for me wasn't just, you know, the dad's sacrifice. I mean, it was it was the whole family unit and how it mm-hmm. how it worked together. But that sacrifice was pretty epic. I don't know what it is about sacrifices, whether it be Mad Max sacrificing himself for a bunch of kids or him doing that for his family. That just, I mean, that that right there, I'd say that's a hero in my in my mind. That's what you want to live up to. And they yep. make that that they make that uh, point in the movie a few times, like you're not like him, you know, you're not, you know, you're not as good as as, as he was, and and blah blah blah. But the the fa- I thought it was going to be the mom the entire time. I did not expect them to do the, to build the children up as much as they did. It was all about the kids, and that's when the kids were the dad. I mean, they he he raised them, and they became just like him eventually. I mean, the boy did did do a, a couple things that pissed me off in the movie that I wanted to scream at him for. I'm like, I can't believe you almost did that. And then and then the fact that he screamed so much, he's whined so much. I was just like, we well, please shut up. But then he finally yeah. came around in the end. So, I mean, that that's my initial everything i have to say about the movie because I, yeah, I didn't think i didn't think they could do it but they did they found a way to do it and make it good i was i was in the same boat i i uh i wanted to go into this and join us because of just how amazing the first one was but uh yeah i was like ah you know it's a sequel and he lost one of his writing partners partners and he just did this one his, himself and it's just yeah I can't go on enough about it, but uh, let's get into these characters. Did you know she was actually Death? I did not. Yeah, I didn't either. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the one of the interviews. I, I uh, uh, what's her real name? Uh, Reagan is her. Yeah. Character. Uh, is that Mill- Millicent? I think so. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen that name before. Uh, well, yeah, I guess he 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 told a story about how uh, what. So in some some points in the movie, they did it a couple of times in the first one. They do it a lot more in this one. Um, like they they go into her face, zoom into her face, and then we hear what how she hears. Mm-hmm. And this inter- interview, he's saying he calls that uh, her 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 envelope, and he's like. He got that idea from her mom. Her, apparently, her mom. He asked her mom if she could hear it all. And he, he he said she told him that she can hear very faintly, but it sounds muffled even if she can't hear it. So very loud noises and like laughter she can hear, but it just sounds muffled. So he was like, "Oh, I'm going to incorporate that into the movie." And I think those scenes are some of my favorites when we hear through her cups. Because how difficult would it be, you know? You you want to be quiet, and of course she 
Oh, she hears is quiet, but she doesn't know if she's actually being quiet. Yeah, I was thinking that too during the movie. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, I thought that was very cool. And the fact that she acts so well, you know, like it's mm. just, I mean, and, and not that being deaf is, I mean, you can't act. <laughs> oh, yes, that doesn't mean that at all. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's just amazing that she's, on top of that, she's a, such an amazing actress. What were you saying, sir? Oh, no, I wouldn't say anything. Yeah, I just yeah. So the, I, I love her scenes and watching her work, and uh, Cillian Murphy, this guy. Uh, wow, <laughs> uh, I didn't think I was gonna like him, oh Scarecrow, um, but because I, cause I was thinking like the kids were thinking this, he's not John. That's not their dad. He can't replace right. him. Uh, but and you know, first he didn't want to. He didn't want yeah, to try. He, he wanted to leave. Wanted so. Anything to do with him. Yeah. And I, I love his change and I love what you mentioned too. That setup uh with that opening was perfect. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's great. I'm sorry, I'm going all over the place. I just passed. You might have wanted to say something about Millicent or I'm Oh no, she did it. You did. You you put it. You hit. It, you hit it perfectly. She did an amazing job. I like that she is actually that because it made the it, it made it feel real. Yes. I mean, I don't think anybody uh, could, could really outact her in that role. No, no. And I'm glad they didn't try. I'm glad he actually found found her. Um, but let's get to Noah Marcus. He's a great actor too because I hated his guts. Yes. <laughs> I wanted him to die. So I never wanted a kid to die so bad. Especially if you hurt that baby by accident. I ain't trying to hurt the baby, but still, I was like, oh man. Like, this baby has survived all this. They got it all the way there. And this asshole's going to make it die. And then he almost kills himself, too. Yeah. <laughs> almost kills himself. Multiple he gets, times. His, Multiple gets his times. leg fucking chomped by a goddamn bear trap. It's just. The worst. I mean, the first scream, though, I feel like they should have just got swarmed. Oh yeah, I think it, it took too long. I hate that only one came to from that scream because he mm-hmm. was screaming his bloody murder. It's crazy. Um, and you're right though. I thought Emily was going to be the one carrying this movie. Um, but it was better. It was the kids and, and yeah. it still still seemed to continue on that whole the, it's a father like uh i don't want to say finding father what's a good way to put it it's like like in this one they're in the, kind of in their father's shadow and trying to live up to him mm-hmm. but yeah I, I don't I, know. I, I, yeah i feel like they were trying to live up to his, his image i mean he set the, mm-hmm. uh, amazing examples so why wouldn't they <laughs> it's hard to follow up with that. yeah it's hard. I mean, how can you not? So that's why I feel like she risked what she did. I don't think, I don't think, I didn't feel like, remember we just talked about uh, I hate characters who feel like, you know, they can just run into a room and scream stop and then everybody should stop. I mean, why? Mm-hmm. Just because you came here and screamed it? Because, you know, you're just young, you know, maybe, maybe good hearted person, but still the world isn't like that. You gotta, you gotta do something. You can't just, you know, assume everything's going to work out. But she's like, no, I mean, I'm not, that's not the way she approached it. She's like, I gotta do something. That's what my dad would do. I gotta, you know, I gotta try and do something. I'm not just going to sit back and, you know, it's not going to run in and say, don't do that or do, or do do that. She's going to actually physically do something and try to change the world. And that's what was so amazing about her character. I feel like she kind of outshined her brother, but I, I do like the brother's growth too. On, at sorry, the very sorry. end. Her brother, Marcus, I, I, so there's a point in the movie where everybody's off doing stuff, mm-hmm. like very important stuff. Uh, her and Cillian are off to go do this very important mission. The mom's out to save the baby and get him medicine. This son of a bitch mm-hmm. <laughs> wants to go and look out a window. Yeah. This young boy wants to go explore. Why? <laughs> Dumb move. Why, man? <laughs> Why? In this world where you know that thing was there, you know how they operate. You've lived in this world. Why do you need to go look out a window? Mm-hmm. I got binoculars. Oh, boy. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, but I get it. And the plot point needed to happen. They needed to bring that danger. I just try and put myself in these movies so I get irritated very easily. Yeah, we were supposed to get mad at him, though. Yeah. Because exactly. we were supposed to then then experience, you know, his little bit of 
a little bit of growth at the end, which I did appreciate. Oh, did you? I want him to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, I liked how he stepped up. He was like, I mean, he didn't go with quite as far as, you know, as his sister or or the mom or the dad. Or, I mean, the baby probably did more than he did. But finally, <laughs> he like jumped up and was like, grabbed the thing and just walked out, holding it forward. Just like, you know, what you going to do now? Yeah. Picked up a gun, you know, not waiting for somebody else to do it. His mom, you know, usually. And he and don't forget, he's got a jacked up leg and he's walking right out there. It's just as calm as a Hindu cow. That's and boom. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. I guess I gotta give him his props. I, I am surprised though, what they did to to Emily's character. Because it doesn't seem like she would have I know she has a baby and him to take care of. They're both, you know, the baby's almost out of oxygen. Though I don't think she knew that at the time. Uh and he's got the broken leg. I don't feel like she would have been like, Go get him. Go get my daughter. Go save her. You know? So I feel like she would have strapped that baby on her back threw him over her shoulder and went after her after what we saw in the first movie, you know, just going for that. I kind of feel like she would have went, especially after he was an asshole to them. Yeah. I feel like it was because the son got hurt and wouldn't. Okay. Win. Yeah. I feel like that was the whole reason that he got hurt was because it kind of trapped her there. I was the only sensible thing to do was to stay there with the kids and send the guy. I mean, she didn't expect her daughter to just, you know, take off, but yeah, that was, mm-hmm. that was so, yeah. And I love the peaceful, seemingly peaceful moments in this movie. Like when she's, uh, Millicent's character is just walking, um, no sound. She seems just content. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even though she's surrounded by things that would just destroy her in a heartbeat. She seems content. You know, it's just. I just love the ambiance of this movie, I guess is what I'm saying. It's just beautifully shot, very well sound like the sound is fantastic, lighting's fantastic. I, I can't say enough good things about this one. Story <laughs> is great. And I mean, I just think everything about this movie is great. Again, I don't think it out, out you know, it doesn't beat the first one. No, no way, yeah. no, no way, no how. But man, that's the fact that you can come this far and still make a, a wonderful film and that, you know, in this franchise now that yeah got to give him credit for it and let's not forget he wrote it he acted mm-hmm. in it he directed it he's a producer i mean holy moly yeah. i also have to note as much as it pains me i might throw up after saying this michael bay was a producer in this as well and in part one which it i did, did not know it didn't it didn't feel beige to me no no nothing about not. these, these movies felt beige so i guess and, i guess and that's producer credit to could bay. just mean you know hey here's some money or i found some money for you to make this so you know, <laughs> or it could have just been like a helping hand or something, you know. You know yeah, gets credit for it. I got it, does talk, not gotta feel talk, bad at all. <laughs> gotta talk about the village of the damned in this movie. It's fishing village of the damned. Oh, <laughs> I love the story that he tells <laughs> yes. about why they are there. That's I yeah, like how they a- used the kid as bait, but I don't know about you. I mean, first of all, how did they make that trap without making any noise? That had to be trip. The one where they put the little noose around his neck and that, that was attached to like a net with bells. Oh yeah, yeah, that would have been difficult. <laughs> I mean, how, how did they make that and get that all set up without making any sound and get murdered? I don't know. How come that many people be living together and not make you know? And noise? how does he let her get that noose around his neck? Yeah, because I well, tell she, you what, she, she would lift her head up. I would have been like, "What the fuck are you?" <laughs> And just Leonidas her into the lake. <laughs> uh, that, it's, it's a good idea, though. But if I was in that position, even though I had the girl there yeah. and I was surrounded by all these people, which was weird that they didn't want anything but the girl, mm. which was weird and creepy. <laughs> it, it just super, super weird and creepy. They didn't. They just wanted the girl. The, the fact that if I was in that position, I would have jumped up and started screaming. I would have been like, what are you going to do now? <laughs> exactly. We all did. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, fuck? yeah, you guys are screwed now. I'm making all kinds of noise. Yeah, I'm shaking the bottles. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, then we find that the creatures, the aliens, have another weakness as well at that point. They can't swim. Nope. They came <laughs> to the wrong planet because this planet's a bunch of water. <laughs> Uh, which sets up, you know, them finding finding the island, which is awesome. But uh, yeah, that you're right. kind of ruined it for some of the people on that island. Yeah, <laughs> they 
brought they brought hell with them. Yep. <laughs> that sucks. Uh, at least it was only one, I guess. Yep. So, yeah. But I did I did uh I did love that story though, but that that uh that's what I thought you were talking about at first. I don't know the damn I was like, I thought they were oh, no, not that, no, 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 not that island, that's fishing village. Yeah, yeah the little little setup. But yeah, the uh, what is his name? I, and I'm not gonna better pronounce it. The Man on Island is what yeah. he's credited that. <laughs> It's odd because he's a fucking superstar. Yep. <laughs> uh, but Hassan, I think is how you say it, Hassu. It's his last name. Anyway, he's great. But he tells a story about how the Coast Guard was tasked with getting everyone away. Only one boat made it out there, and they're that you know. Mm-hmm. So that was that was uh yeah. But they had they were living life. They were having a bonfire. <laughs> yeah, they were having good old times. Um, any favorite parts in this? Oh man, there are so many. I did like, I, even though I hated the boy, I did like when he, this is going to sound bad, when he got his leg, you know, caught in the trap. <laughs> just because I was like, oh man, how's he going to, you know, you know, t- you know how, how are they going to do this and not make noise? But no, they just went for it and made a bunch of noise. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, sure. And, uh, and I he like did how a great I, job of expressing pain. Like I felt, I felt like he yeah, was actually hurt. <laughs> he, spent, he spent the majority of that movie screaming or whining or crying or something. I mean, that had to have been a, like a strain on the boy because that's all he did the entire movie. Jared walks up to him. You're gonna be a bitch this film. Huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. And I love that the mom didn't just grab the baby and the daughter and run. She like yeah. stayed, 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 just stood there as a family, and she she was able. To, to get them out of that situation. I, I feel that was a pretty intense scene. Uh, the village of the dam scene, fishing dam, village of the dam, whatever you want to call it. I love mm-hmm. that scene just because that was so creepy. I was, I was wondering, because the guy hints at it, uh, Emmett hits at it that you don't know what yeah. the people are like out there. They're not, you know, they're not good people anymore, but there are some good people. They're on an island, but everybody else are, are just turning into these like, you know, weirdo creatures that, you know, kidnap little girls apparently. <laughs> and that's okay. And then, you know, yeah. Yeah, so many, so many good scenes. I love when she shot the one of the oxygen oxygen uh, containers to try to blow the creature up, and it didn't even face the creature. I, I was gonna say I felt bad at that moment. I was like, mm-hmm. they, they, now they're down to one. Yep. <laughs> they're fucked. But that um, was really cool. There's so many good scenes in this thing. Just one yeah. after the other. It's kind of hard to pick. The, the I love opening. It. <laughs> the, yeah, the, the opening. opening. <laughs> That's my favorite because I, I just right before we started, I was watching a uh, him do a explain how he shot it and it's all one take uh, other than they do when the car flips that's their one stitch where they uh because they wanted it to be safe and they didn't want the car to flip on anybody <laughs> but they legit you know right when he gets out of the truck and goes to talk to, talk to the cop mm-hmm. that uh that's when the scene switches to from the one take to that crazy stunt scene where the car flips yep. and then it goes back into that one take but yeah, and then from there on, it's just one continuous shot up until you know. Oh, uh, and that, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say the bus, the bus, like when he's like, "Mom, there was that, there was that," and she gets distracted for a second and almost runs into a bus. <laughs> and has to quick throw it in reverse, and it is backing up while this bus is barreling towards her. Just fantastic. It also shows how lucky the family is. I mean, because they got split up, yet somehow through that that crazy event we're able to find each other again mm-hmm. you know so that's just i mean i mean that's just destiny right there they were meant to be together they were meant to do this thing they were meant to raise these kids more so the girl than the boy again because she basically <laughs> sends out a signal you know everywhere that just basically can basically kill these creatures i didn't want to talk about that do you think john was a fan of mars attack mm, probably <laughs> Kind of right <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I, I doesn't take away from anything from these movies. I'm just saying there's there's a similarity there. But oh <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah, it's it's perfect. What's all Rotten Tomatoes have to say about this? Uh Rotten Tomatoes uh has it the critics is a ninety percent tomato meter. Uh, certified fresh audience score is a 94%. And if you guys like to compare that with the first movie, uh, the tomato meter is at a 96 
and the audience score is only at an 83. Mm, so the audience are dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, I went to check Cosmic Sin again because at one point it had jumped back up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's down again. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, Cosmic Sin is probably one of the worst movies I've seen in a very long time. And while we were covering that film, like the tomato, we literally watched the tomato meter go down. <laughs> so I had to, and then at one point the fans got a hold of it and uh, review bombed it up because they were like, "Oh, we're, you, the critics hate this. We're gonna make them love it." So, but it's down. The audience story is seventy one still, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> the middle meter is three percent. Uh, anyway, uh, I definitely go watch for me, especially if you can get out to a, a cinema right now, which uh, AMC's are open. Um, I think uh, a couple. There's some other, a bunch are open right now, so. <laughs> Just uh, do a Google there. What about you, sir? Absolutely, go watch. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see a reason not to. If you like the first one, definitely watch the second one. Duh. I mean, if you haven't seen the first one, yet, <laughs> you need to. You need to, so you can watch this one too, because they're two amazing movies. I'm, I'm complete. I, I'm still uh, shocked from the first one being so good, and then we get this one. So yeah, can't wait yeah. to see what else John does. I hope he uh, uh, keeps on making movies because I'm gonna keep on watching them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, now I'm going to have to sit down and watch his uh, Tom Clancy show that I was mm-hmm. avoiding because he's my best friend now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so 180, uh, where you can find us, go watch movie.com, the one stop shop for all things entertainment. Um, sh- stories are there. My trailer's there. I'll get Robert's trailer's there, trailer there. I know I got his last trailer on there late. But I'll get this one out there uh, sooner because I actually actually I might have posted them on the socials. Yeah, I posted this one on socials, so his is on the socials already. Um, and that's yeah, we can find the podcast on the site as well or anywhere a podcast can be played. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> it just ended right there. <laughs> that's it. Uh, I'm Kelvin and I'm Robert. Go watch a movie. Grab your popcorn, rip that ticket, get in that seat, lickety-splicket. Go watch a movie!